In addition to brushes and Compose, there is another delightful mechanism for painting your pixels and rendering graphics on screen called shaders. Using shaders has gotten a lot easier by using AGSL. It is based on GLSL, runs on Android 13, and runs on the GPU in parallel for each pixel that will be rendered on screen, making it a very performant way of drawing on screen. This is the format of a basic shader. We store it in a string, and if we annotate it with the at language tag, Android Studio will enable syntax highlighting. The shader needs one function, main defined, that takes a coordinate defined as input and returns a color. The input coordinate is two floats, represented by a float two, and contains the x, y position of the pixel that the shader is running on. The return value is a half four, which represents a color. The return value is made up of four channels, red, green, blue, and the alpha channel. In this case, we set the red channel to one and the alpha to one, and all other channels to zero, which will result in a solid red color being produced for all pixels. To use the shader, we use the draw with cache modifier and create a runtime shader, passing in the defined basic shader. Next, we create a shader brush, passing in the runtime shader as input. And then we call draw rect with the created shader brush. The draw with cache modifier will ensure that the shader brush and runtime shader objects are cached until the size of the drawing area changes. Running this, we will get a red square. I know, all that work for just a red square? But shaders do unlock a whole range of effects. This example has two colors as input and renders a gradient between them by progressively mixing them over the area. Shaders can take input parameters. Firstly, the resolution. This will contain the width and height of the composable area. Then we define two uniforms for the colors input into the shader. In our case, we have our two colors defined in Kotlin. Because we want to mix the two colors, we need to understand the incoming frag coordinate in relation to the overall resolution. We divide the frag coordinates by the resolution to get a UV coordinate a normalized coordinate in the range of 0 to 1. So as an example, when the shader runs for the pixel with a frag coordinate of 100, 200, and the resolution of the area is 1600 by 900, the UV coordinate for this particular pixel will be two values between 0 and 1. The next step is to get the fraction of how much the colors should be mixed. We can use a built-in distance function, taking in the UV coordinate and getting a distance to the coordinate, 0 to 1. We then use this value with the built-in mix functions, which mixes the two colors with the fraction provided. Now to use the shader, we need to set the input variables. The first one we set is the resolution with shader.setFloatUniform, providing in the width and the height. And then we set the color uniforms on the shader by getting the individual channels of the color, giving us this pretty gradient. The next step is to add a little bit of movement to our shader we will animate the yellow getting bigger over time. So given our shader code from before, we update it to also take in a time uniform. We then change the amount of mixing to not mix equally, but to rather oscillate the amount of mixing between the two colors. It's common to use mathematical functions such as sine and cos with time to transform time into an oscillating value between negative one and one. We've also taken some creative liberty here and multiplied the time by 0.5 to also slow down the animation. Now, to input the time into the shader, we create a time variable that increments itself using the width infinite animation frame millis. This will be updated on every frame. And then we set the time uniform to the newly created state variable, which gives us a gradient that has a bit of movement where the bottom corner grows and shrinks in size in a subtle way. Shader brushes are a great way to enhance backgrounds or pixels of text rendered on screen. But you can also use shaders to apply custom render effects to your whole composable UI tree by passing your UI as input and performing transformations. Take this UI that has some text and a button in it. We can apply a noisy shader to the whole composable hierarchy and make it wobble over time. To do this, we define a Perlin noise shader. And then using graphics layer modifier, we apply a render effect to the composable that contains the target elements. 
it's worth noting that we pass in the current UI in as a uniform called contents. Contents is a special uniform that we can evaluate to get the pixel color that is normally rendered at that point. We do some noise calculations, which transforms the UV coordinate to a new position on screen. We then call contents.eval with this newly transformed coordinate to get the new pixel that should be displayed at that point, which results in this fun, noisy UI. Shaders unlock a whole new set of UI effects that you can apply to your apps. Take a look at different examples of what's possible on popular websites like ShaderToy. That's all for now. To learn how to make your apps more vibrant with shaders, check out the documentation. Happy AGS selling!